Hello and welcome to Wargame European Escalation. I'm Hob Gadling and today we'll be playing through the third campaign's first mission, Full the Gap. We have lost contact with the rest of the 11th ACR. As far as we know, we may be the only ones left. We're starting to run short of fuel and ammunition. We must reach our lines very soon. But we are now behind the Soviet front, so we'll have to pass through their lines in order to get to ours. And here we go. In this mission, we have a group of stragglers at Hotel, and we must escort them to the other side of the map. On both east and west edges are objective areas where we have the secondary objective of finding some more stragglers and they are a couple of hidden objectives destroying the Soviet artillery and finding and refueling friendly helicopters. Most of our units are low on ammunition and fuel, so the first task will be to take the enemy FOB and supply trucks just ahead on the road. This mission features the M2 and M3 Bradley fighting vehicles. They are an United States answer to BMPs armed with a 25 mm Bushmaster autocannon and some tow anti-tank missiles. They can also carry infantry and the M M3 is a scout variant. It has good optics but it can't carry any infantry units in this game. We also have the powerful M1 Abrams tank making its first appearance in our units. Yeah. It's armed with a 105mm cannon and it's very well armored, but it's rather, rather fuel inefficient. We must be careful not to strand any valuable units because it's very much possible to run, simply run out of fuel here. The enemy troops as of yet haven't been a problem, but those hinds might be. The best idea when you have enemy helicopters above forests is simply to charge in into the forest. Now, if the enemy had a lot of infantry covering that forest, then we might be in trouble, but it looks like we are in the clear. dedicated anti-air units are in back of the in back of the group but I trust my M2s to be able to handle any enemy air units. The 25 millimeter uh, autocannon is not great against anything but we have lots of them it shoots rapidly and it's a threat to everything except the heavy armor. And against those we have the tow and the tank missiles. Typically I would take the road bearing off to right here. But this is somewhat of a special situation. I can't call any reinforcements in. Oh, 
looks like we bumped into some enemy units. Unfortunately for them, they are quite massed, so our 105mm guns and auto cannons and missiles should should deal with them pretty handily. Uh, good scouting is important here. As long as we have scouts alive, we have four, now three, M3 Bradleys acting as our scouts. As long as we have scouts, we can take uh, full advantage of our ATGMs. We can destroy enemy tanks and infantry at safe distances. Something like that. But we only have three scouts, so I'm going to have to be extra careful with them, not to lose them in a single mistake. As I was saying, normally I would have taken the road, but this is something of a special case. We only have this group of units, and I think there are some Soviet forces trying to catch up with us, so I'd rather not leave them any obvious hints where we went. Also, the roads are probably covered very well, so I'm not going to use roads unless I need to move quickly. I'd rather take the extra effort of going through the roads less traveled, or fields, as it might be in this case. A major problem in this mission is the lack of supplies. ATGMs are really demanding on supply units. So if I can save a couple of missiles by dro dropping artillery on a static cluster of units, even though those units are not dangerous to me per se, I'll do it because that puts a less of a strain on my supplies here. If I was in a hurry, I could have just charged in and destroyed the enemy Shilkas and Malkas with my guns. They are effectively unarmed against us. That's one of the hidden secondary objectives here, destroy the Soviet artillery. Unfortunately, that's not nearly the last artillery we'll be meeting in this mission. Looks like another FOB has come up. It's worth capturing it, repairing the units, and especially refueling them. All the American vehicles in the game are massively inefficient fuel hogs. M113s, M2 and M3 Bradleys, M1 Abrams, all guzzle fuel like there's no tomorrow. And the ranges are rather short. But you don't go to war with the army you'd like to have, you go to war with the army you have. Those two BMPs are a bit of a problem. The tail of my column here is not equipped to deal with them, and if possible I'd like to just outrun them. They manage to hit one of my supply trucks with a missile, but since they are all empty, it's not a big loss. One of the major problems of ATGMs 
even after the patch is the fact that you have to remain stationary while shooting so it's possible to outrun outrun missiles and I'm trying to put some hedges between me and the enemy shooters that should allow me some protection against the missiles and let me approach the enemy units without being without taking too much damage the tail of my column will have to stay at the FOB I'm going to deploy my infantry infantry ATGMs there while the rest of my forces deal with the Soviet concourse ambushes that's a that's a good deployment of Soviet units there the ATGMs are close enough that they can protect each other but far away that I don't have any good targets for my artillery there's still one ATGM somewhere in the bushes and I'd prefer if it didn't get too many flank shots on us we've lost some of our vehicles in this engagement it's especially problematic to lose too many infantry fighting vehicles here because infantry in itself is rather slow and I can't afford the time to play catch up here if I run out of infantry fighting vehicles and other troop carriers some men will just have to leg it looks like the enemy units on golf have been pretty passive this far that's good it allows me to drop some artillery on them and refuel and resupply my units on the FOB we might as well drain it dry here there's no point in leaving supplies in FOBs if we have something we can use it for American infantry is one of the most interesting units in the game I find it's rather standard infantry unit but it comes in the most interesting vehicles the M113 is is rather like an Warsaw packed APC but it's tracked and it's really fuel inefficient so you have to manage your bounds rather carefully it's also uh, 10 points so it's not really suicidally cheap it's hard to just throw them away but on the other hand the machine gun on it is rather good and of course the infantry it carries uh, performs well the other big things are the M2 Bradleys uh, and that's probably the hardest unit to find any use for because it's rather expensive it's well armed but it's lightly armored and it's expensive so 
it's a sort of an expensive glass cannon and it's hard to justify getting an autocannon and missile on the same unit when it's so expensive you can get a vehicle with an autocannon and another vehicle with uh, anti-tank missile and use them separately. More vehicles allow you more freedom of deployment and choice of routes. We bump into some Soviet PT-76 scouts but those are no danger and we manage to link up with friendly Americans at Golf. The next decision is to choose whether we try to make a run for it or whether we try to link up with the with the German forces on the other side of the map. The forest you see there is a prime ground for ambush. So if possible I'll try to avoid avoid that. The German route is more open and since a lot of my vehicles have ATGMs I'd prefer to fight over open ground. Long lines of sight favor me in this conflict. Once again the whole army has to stop and refuel. I'm not going to leave any fuel or supplies behind if I can avoid it. The supply trucks I have will also have to get filled up. Holding my rear at the MTFOB are some Stinger anti-air missiles. Those are famous f from the Afghanistan war of 1980s where Soviet, Soviet Heinz had problems dealing with CIA supplied Stinger missiles. The uh, Mujahideen fighters had great successes using these these missiles against helicopters, especially nearby airfields when helicopters were taking off or landing. They had such slow airspeeds that they didn't really have any way of avoiding incoming missiles. We also have Dragon anti-tank guided missiles, probably among the worst designed missiles in the history of anti-tank missiles. The launcher requires the shooter to remain in a standing position during the whole flight time. The maximum range of the missile is around 800 meters or so. So Soviet 14.5 millimeter heavy machine guns can fire back at the launch site when the missile is in range. Uh, the combination of having to stand up and fire the uh, and to guide the missile during the whole flight time while taking machine gun fire isn't really a good good idea. Here I decided to make a run for it. I usually dislike going through cities like this but I'm willing to charge and risk it here. Looks like I luck out. There are no enemy infantry units holding the city. If there were, we might be in problems. As it is, the charge pays off when I get most of my units immediately through the city to deal with the 
see Soviet tanks on the other side. One of my rifleman squads has been left behind. I don't want to risk a uh, carrier going back there and in any case I'm running out of space on my vehicles so the riflemen will just have to try and make it on foot. I wish all the best of luck to them. more supply trucks captured. That's not much of supplies, but every little bit counts. The column is again spreading out a bit. Uh, I don't really have a good approach on the West German held zone. I'll have to stick more or less by the road and I don't like roads. Roads are practically an invitation to ambushes. So I'll try to spread out a bit, make sure I have all my big guns up front and try to locate and sniff out any ambushes before they manage to do any real damage. Some infantry and T-72s are not a problem, especially at this range. The T-72s, as you probably remember by now, are notoriously inaccurate. So at the max range shootout I have a huge advantage. Infantry is also not a threat. The enemy BRDM uh, ATGM carriers, on the other hand, might be a problem. They have powerful enough missiles to take out my Bradleys on one shot, and even the M1 Abrams tanks will probably die to a couple hits. As long as they are not moving, I'll drop some shells on them, try to at least shake up their morale so I have a better chance of rushing in. I find dealing with ATGMs is rather like dealing with snipers. Either you stay out of their line of sight and try to deal with indirect fires or you charge in with enough forces that they can't deal with all of you at once. Looks like that's one of the ATGMs down. The other one makes a run for it. T-80s normally would be a good strong unit, but here it's alone, and lone tanks don't last long, no matter how powerful they are. This plateau edge might be problematic. The plateaus always cut line of sight in a rather weird fashion. So I'll try to get as many of my units on top of it at once as possible. Looks like that's where the ATGM carrier went, but we managed to get in so close that we could deal with it with our autocannons before it got the missile off. 
that's also the friendly helicopters which are useful yeah not because they add any fire firepower to our group but because they are our scouts. We have now good sight on what's happening what's happening on the right of us. And as we spot some tanks there, I have enough time to deploy on a simple defensive line. Anything the enemy might want to throw at us now we'll have to brave uh, half a dozen ATGMs and my remaining M1 Abrams. That's not really a good proper defensive line. I should have spread out the ATGM units more, but as said, I can't move them while the missiles are in flight or the missiles will miss. So in advance, the group will always more or less resemble a ball ball of units like this some en enemy infantry that's not going to be a problem and the headquarters unit it's armed with the with the 70 uh, uh, six millimeter gun, but but that's not a big deal. We have more than enough firepower to take care of it. Stragglers will have to catch up with our main forces. I don't like the looks of that small city there. I can avoid it though, so I will. Some of my empty supply trucks are detracted in the forest. They'll be stuck there for a while. So I either can leave them behind or push forward. There's not not much of a hurry right now, so I might as well spend a few seconds here allowing the tail of the column to move a bit closer to my main fighting units. The next task will be to take Delta, link up with the German survivors, and then we can attempt the final push to safety. This is why you don't put units in a big clusters like I have right here. They are excellent targets for art artillery. Fortunately, the salvo was a little off target and it didn't do heavy damage, but in especially in multiplayer, barrages like that will ruin your day. You can count on every light unit in the area dying to a couple rocket launcher systems if you don't move them out of the way in time. The enemy tries a counterattack here 
the BMPs are not much of a problem, but the helicopters might be. And my column is now effectively split in three parts. The first and last parts of it have enough anti-air, but the central part might be in trouble. Getting shot with more artillery doesn't really help. The standard way of dealing with something like this is either charging in or spreading out. I don't want to spread out here. I'll have to keep moving forward and spreading out just makes me more susceptible to counterattacks. So I'll have to push forward with my units and hope they can catch the artillery before it reloads and shoots again. This is quite a lot of Soviet units. We get the German forces, some Panzer Grenadiers and Jaguars, that's more missiles, but they'll have to deploy before they are of any use. I only have two M1 Abramses left and they are in a rather poor position there. That's one of my remaining Abrams tanks destroyed and the last one is under heavy missile fire. Abrams is now down, but we have a good view on the enemy enemy forces and we can drop some artillery on them. Unfortunately for them, they are rather bunched up, so they make for a good arty target. Good thing I still have a gun left to shoot. Soviet vehicle area. Some of my infantry units have been left behind. If, if I had more time and more confidence in my position, I would send some APCs to pick them up. But I, at the moment, I'd rather keep them on our left flank. That's more enemy artillery dropping on us. We have to start moving forward or we'll be ground to dust beneath the enemy bombardment. That's one of the main, main purposes of artillery units. They force the enemy to react somehow. Stay, standing still under bombardment is the worst possible plan. There's yet another small village up ahead. I'll be going around it. I don't want to rush my vehicles through an unscouted city if I don't have to. A couple of infantry units will deal huge 
damage to my column so it's better to take advantage of the depression in the ground the village is in. I'll go around the right side and try to keep all of my units hidden behind the military crest of that uh, partic particular contour curve. Another round of resupplying is becoming a theme of this mission that we'll have to stop and refuel every now and then. One of our forward operating bases was captured by enemy troops. That means that we are being chased. I'd rather not fight with the chasing enemy forces if I can avoid it, so we'll have to move forward right away. A small amount of East German Special Forces are hiding in the forest. That's two guys left. This is why infantry can be so dangerous. Those two guys took a huge amount of firepower to kill and they still managed to destroy one of our APCs. Also looks like the enemy is trying to attack, attack the column but this time they chose the route of attack really poorly. We have already a good defensive line and all we have to do is to deploy at the edge of that control. We should be able to deal with this with no problems. is lagging behind. Well, I have a good defensive position here and looks like some friendly ATGM choppers have joined us. So I can hold the position here for a while longer and take out the approaching infantry before moving on. It shouldn't take long. Charges over open ground are almost suicidal for infantry. Last remaining enemy units are Strela surface-to-air missiles. They are no danger to any of our units, but they might get a shot off at the friendly helicopters, so I'd rather take them out if possible. Looks like we found the enemy rocket launcher that has been shooting at us. Range, so are we. 
almost home. The last push is rather short. Just take it carefully, go around the village and then make a run for it. Even if enemy has laid an ambush in place, we can probably just run past them, taking a few casualties. And of course there's a possibility of friendly units defending the area so with any luck we'll meet enemy forces and sandwich them between our allies and ourselves. That's an enemy FOB I won't be able to use. I don't want to go through the village. I'll have to see if I can try and capture it with my infantry units so it would be out of the enemy hands, but even so it's not going to be of much use to us. Shoot out between some anti-air units. We have more men and we have better position so we easily take the enemy unit out. Some of my vehicles are once again running out of fuel. I'll try and get everyone refueled for the final final push. Running out of fuel just short of the objective would would not be nice. The M163 Vulcan anti-air vehicles are an interesting case. They are not really good at, at shooting down enemy helicopters, especially those armed with ATGMs, since helicopters can outrange the minigun significantly or the Vulcan, Vulcan cannon, the old Foghorn. The vehicle is excellent at suppressing enemy ground troops though. The gun has a huge rate of fire and it has quite a lot of ammunition available for that task. So any enemy light units and especially infantry will be will be suppressed really quickly the main use for those is a sort of an static defense putting a couple of those around your CVs more or less guarantees that enemy special forces trying to sneak in will either be suppressed or we'll have to deal with the anti-air gun first, giving your CV time to run away. And of course, if it's well positioned, it's possible that enemy helicopters will blunder close enough to get a bur burst of anti-air fire. A couple of hinds are in sight, but I'm not not going to attack them. If we can just quietly slip past here, I'm happy. That's three T-80A tanks. 
that's something I would rather not have seen again. Lucky for us, we have a couple of allied helicopters near Alpha. I'll try to sneak in the bunch of Panzer Grenadiers and take a shot with the missiles here. Looks like it's not going to work. There's something else besides the T-80s hidden in the forest. Might as well charge in and see what it is. The AGS armed UAGs are not the danger. 40mm grenade launcher mounted on a jeep is not going to be any sort of a threat to either Bradleys or uh, tanks. Another AGS Jeep down, and now we are home free. Some of my infantry is lagging a bit behind, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. The breakthrough of the 11th ACR has caused trouble in the rear of the 8th Guard's army, slowing its advance. And that's a victory for us. From this point on, the game more or less expects us to kill at least four times as many units as we ourselves lose. The Bradleys and tanks we had have quite handsome kill lists and it will have to stay like this for the remainder of the game. This is Hope Gadling signing out. Peace.